Russell said an interesting thing the other day when we were talking about Dr. Lee. As we do, because we know how to kick back and relax. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, all the good stuff you've done and all the good stuff I've done, imagine this in Russell's time of Boston, which is much grander and more interesting. He said, is when are the fact we are the most we said, we're basically like you, Levine. We're completely die-hard, uh, utterly, utterly uh, dedicated, really, really conservative fanboys. But when we push against that and force the show to be modern, on that, in that battlefield is where Doctor Who gets good. Is when people who are, and I am really, really traditional, I'm not sure about this new series at all. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. When, when you force yourself out of, out of your fanboyness into, into a different version of it, into, into deliberately subverting it, saying, yeah, he's got a wife, or yeah, he's doing does this, or yeah, but that's how you get interested. I always felt that Russell and you, as fanboy, <coughs> sort of, you know when you used to watch Doctor Who in, in the classic <coughs> series, and then you'd sit and fantasise about the Daleks, and, and wish that uh, an old man and his granddaughter couldn't tip one over. Just like that. And you think, oh, I want, they are scary, but I, I wish they, they looked better. And they, it seems to me that you've sort of come in as fanboys and, and made all those, you know, he used to play um, spoons and a recorder, and now he plays an electric guitar. Everything's been sort of well, I like upgraded. To, I like to play the spoon, that that's fine. <laughs> um, uh, oh, I don't know. It's different. It's different. The classic series and the. Uh, and the the modern series, are different in many respects. One thing you have to remember about anything you ever criticise about the classic series, you have to remember it was made of no money at all. Really, no money at all. And more, more crucially, kind of no love. The BBC didn't love it. They tolerated it. They should have loved it. And they did fantastic business for them for no money. But they didn't love it. I mean, the way John Nathan Turner was treated by the BBC when he was producing those final series is a, is a disgrace. It's an absolute disgrace. He was producing good television, and people were watching it, and he was not being given the support or the backup to make the show he wanted to make. Outrageous. We, never, we are never in that situation. Doctor Who is absolutely loved by the BBC. And can I say, not just because it's a hit. Um, when, when I took it over, Ben Stevenson said to me, this can't audience-wise keep growing. It did, in fact, as we went international. But this can't keep growing. That's not what we do Doctor Who for. We do Doctor Who because it's a bloody good show. Just make a bloody good show. And that's fine. And if it tails off a bit, we don't have a problem with that. So long as it's superb, just make something excellent. Um, they love it that much. Um, they, they, the classic series did not get that love and support. Uh, and, but despite that, and let's be clear, you can pick holes in it, as we all like to do, because we're Doctor Who fans. Um, <laughs> It has more good ideas in it, uh, the, the classic run of Doctor Who, than any other television series in history. You can, you can say, well, maybe that wasn't very realistic, or maybe that still was a bit slow or something. They invented the TARDIS. Somebody sat in a room and said, it's bigger on the inside, and it looks like a police telephone. They invented the Doctor, who's never co whose name sorted as Doctor Who, but isn't Doctor Who, which is in itself a weird and charming thing. They invented regeneration. They invented the Daleks, they invented Cybermen, they invented a different version of the show where the Doctor was a benevolent alien living on Earth working for uh, units and, and saving the planet. Whole different series contained within Doctor Who. They invented, we've forgotten how good this is, the sonic screwdriver. <laughs> Come on, just, just wipe your brain for a moment. A sonic screwdriver? That's brilliant. He, he gets out a screwdriver and they're sitting in the script room saying, the doctor just couldn't have a screwdriver. He, he could have, I don't know what's called, a photon screwdriver or a sonic screwdriver. He'd have a sonic. He'd, he'd, in some way, it would be sound oriented. Brilliant. All those, there are more good ideas there. And look, Breaking Bad, The West Wing, these are uh, two of the things I think are, the, are among the best things television has ever done. Doctor Who has more ideas in a couple of episodes than either of them have in an entire run. That's what makes Doctor Who more than a television show, it makes it a legend, it makes it a myth. There is more invention and more brilliance, and yes, sometimes it doesn't, you know, the special effects aren't as good as you want or whatever, but there are more ideas to set children's minds alight than anything else they will ever encounter, and that is why it is the greatest thing ever.